uh, given clothing and uh, you know, you know, treated with medicine. So we have lawyers here who we help them do their documents. We are bring them to restore them to the society. Then we find out if some of them need rehabilitation, they go to the rehabilitation center. Some of them need help, medical help, they go to the doctors. So just like that, they go to the translator. The government and the people of Ukraine, even the ordinary people, they know us now. They know that every hopeless situation is being resolved in our church. So if people use the uh, poison, the minds of ordinary people, if the government used to poison them through newspapers, articles before, now most of the people in Kiev are positive about us because they know of the work we have done. Because some of them know so there are people, their friends or relatives that have been to the church and God has helped them. So they are really positive. Most people now feel we are doing at least a good job. Sunday's church has grown to over 20,000 members. Different rehabilitation clinics have started out of this church, with more than 3,000 people being set free from drugs and alcohol addiction. Several orphanages have been set up through the activities of Sunday and his staff. Thousands of Mafia members have received Christ, their lives to be totally changed. The members of Sunday's church, the Embassy of God, have had a profound influence on the entire cross-section of society. What started out as an impossibility is now actually happening. Previous skeptic politicians and members of the Senate have witnessed the change that Sunday's work has had on society and are now frequently seen attending the Embassy of God. God started using them as our spokesman, you know. Now we don't need to talk, now we don't need to act. They are acting for us. They are the ones saying, oh, we know this man, we've been there, we know what he's doing. And through those people, God started like defending us and vindicating us. My life is relationship with God, you know, and working with God. And every other thing is like a hobby to me. So if people are really hungry for God, what they should begin to look for is not the success or the growth or the achievements or the fruits of, 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 of ministry. I think they should first of all make God their God, their meat, their meal, their daily bread, their life. They should just make God, they should just uh, encircle themselves with God. That is what Jesus was trying to tell us when he said that you seek first the kingdom of God. If we can do that, we will not have problem with growth, with success, with, with achievements. He loves to give his time, he loves to give his heart, his soul, he loves to give anything that he can give to help, you know, to help people and to make the world a better place. It's very risky. It takes a lot of risk. Sometimes some are good, sometimes some are bad. But that's life, you have to risk. Uh, when I see people's lives change, it's like I'm paid by salary. It's like uh, I am comforted that it's worth doing, doing. but I'm not relax, like relaxing just because some people's lives were changed. Each, each person I see that is changed and testifying is a push to me to make me to know that there are many others out there that need to be changed. So I'm not relaxing on that. I'm not stopping on that. I'm thinking of how many more are out there that need to be touched and affected. The Senate will come to order. Today's opening prayer will be offered by guest chaplain, Reverend Sunday Adelaja of the Embassy of God Church in Kiev, Ukraine. Let us pray. O Lord of creation, 
We acknowledge your lordship today, your sovereignty, love, and power. We ask that you will bless the United States of America in these days of great uncertainties. Bless the leaders of this great nation with the wisdom needed to lead the nation in the right direction. As leaders, we realize that there are some things we want but do not need, and some things we need but do not want. You have promised to meet our needs but not satisfy our greed. Help us to realize that our decisions have a destiny. Our choices have consequences. Our path has a purpose. Our faith has a foundation. Our home has a hope, and this country has a cause. Acknowledging that as America goes, so goes our world, I ask for a sweeping, weeping and reaping revival throughout this great nation. May your kingdom come and your will be done in America as it is in heaven. Help us to remember that America is great because America is good. If America ceases to be good, it will cease to be great. God of heaven, please help America to continue to be good. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will read a communication to the Senate. Washington, D.C., April 23, 2007, to the Senate. Under provisions of Rule 1, Paragraph 3 of the Standing Rules of the Senate, I hereby appoint the Honorable Jim Webb, a senator from the Commonwealth. I and my wife are standing here now behind, I mean, in front of the building of the United Nations. Uh, this is where the whole world is uh, gathering together and uh, having their meetings and their summits. The heads of states of every nation will come here next month. And that's when God has given us the opportunity to come and talk in the United Nations and speak to the diplomats here and to the leaders that are coming from different nations. And uh, uh, we have the opportunity to speak twice today. Uh, we're going to speak to, to leaders in the afternoon and in, in the evening to the diplomats. We thank God for this opportunity that is given unto us. He has taken us beyond our imagination. He has taken us beyond the borders of the Ukraine. Uh, la this year as well, four months ago, like I said, I was speaking in the United States Senate as the first African man to have the opportunity to do that. And we thank God that we are carrying the name and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ to as many doors as God will open. UN, an international organization which unites today 192 countries of the world. Once a year, leaders of these countries come together for a general assembly, which is the main discussion and representative body of the organization. An invitation was received from employees and representatives of the United Nations. Representatives of all missions and countries involved in the UN were invited. Leaders of various city organizations were invited to this meeting as well. This meeting took place in the main hall of UN, a conference room where every country is represented. 500 representative organizations were present as well as leaders from over 30 world countries. Sanda Adelaja was the first pastor ever to speak at the main hall of the UN. At this meeting, Pastor Sunday said that the church has an answer to global needs, that it cannot be excluded from solving global issues and problems. This meeting was a historical moment as well. God gave the word to Pastor Sunday for this meeting, Psalm 24, 7. Lift up your hands, O you gates be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. At the beginning of the meeting, Pastor Sunday, having apologized before the non-Christian representatives, asked everyone to make two prayers. 
holding their country nameplates, representatives prayed to God to inherit these countries. The next prayer was for the gates to be lifted up, all obstacles be removed, so the King of Glory may come in. This was a prophetic moment at this meeting, just as God helped enter the UN without hindrance, so He wants to enter every country. The next meeting was a closed-door meeting. It was an official reception with the Secretary General Kiyotaka Akasaka in his office. The meeting was about a contribution a church may bring into solving global issues. Also, discussion included acceptance of the Embassy of God Church to the UN. From that moment, an enrollment procedure has started. This way, it will be possible to have a representative mission at the UN, participate in all meetings, preparation of directives to various problems on the level of all other countries. In the evening, a third meeting took place with representatives of various countries and ambassadors. The key topic of the meeting was how Christians can use values of the kingdom to influence this world. Everybody presented was amazed to hear these words for the first time. They were also convinced country leaders have to hear this message. One country representative suggested to invite Pastor Sunday to speak at a general assembly of the UN where country presidents meet. This suggestion was asked to be included in the agenda. The visit to the UN had a historical and a prophetic meaning. Currently the process of registration and entry of the Embassy of God Church into UN is underway and it is already obvious that the church must play an active role in solving problems of mankind. Ukraine, Kyiv, the Embassy of God. Not only in Ukraine is Pastor Sunday a household name, but he is also well known in many places of the world. Pastor Sunday's ministry is a phenomenon in modern Christianity. He is an ordinary man from a poor Nigerian village who managed to make his way in society and build the largest evangelical community at a young age. He did not do this in Western society where there is freedom of religion, but rather in a former atheistic stronghold, the so-called Empire of Evil post-Soviet Ukraine. As a black pastor, he is the head of a church where 99% of the members are white Europeans. Through his ministry, approximately 2 million people have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Over the years, Pastor Sunday has stepped out of the limitations of the walls of the church and has entered into the social and political spheres. The new Ukrainian government has recognized the role of the Embassy of God and its pastor in the life of the country. The president has expressed his thankfulness to Pastor Sunday for the active participation of the church during the Orange Revolution. Thank you for your participation in our common victory. Your conscientious work has become a considerable part of that victory. It was you who protected democracy in Ukraine, standing for its high ideals, not considering your own interests. I am convinced that as long as there are people in Ukraine who have the same civil position, dignity, and spirit as you have, everything will be all right in this country. With best wishes, President of Ukraine, Viktor Yushchenko. Pastor Sunday Adelaja was awarded with several international awards and doctoral degrees. The Australian multimillionaire Peter J. Daniels awarded Pastor Sunday Adelaja with a gold medal for his personal contribution to human destinies and the reformation of society. The first time I've been to the Ukraine and I'm quite impressed with what is taking place here. Of course, it's very unusual to have a man from Nigeria running a white church in the Ukraine, and that's captured the imagination of the whole world. In November 2004, Pastor Sunday was invited by the president of his homeland, the Nigerian Federal Republic. After that meeting, he as a Nigerian preacher was invited in every state of Nigeria to hold seminars and conferences on the topic of national rebirth. In May of 2005, Sunday and Elijah was named as one of the seven most influential evangelical leaders invited to a meeting with the Israeli government.
In September of 2006, Sandy Adelaju was invited as one of the most influential persons to represent Ukraine at the Clinton Global Initiative Conference, organized by the ex-president of the United States, Bill Clinton. The Clinton Global Initiative is the union of the most influential heads or ex-heads of states, businessmen, top scientists, and public figures possessing the most innovative ideas. Pastor Sunday is respected by many political and religious figures as well as by people of the arts and sciences. World-renowned preachers such as T.L. Osborne, Miles Monroe, Reinhard Bonnke, John Maxwell, and John Bevere are a few having a close relationship with Pastor Sunday. The Ministry of Sunday Adelaja has drawn the attention of the world media. Well-known publications such as the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, The Washington Post, Christianity Today, Ministry Today, and Charisma carry articles about this African preacher who is working miracles in Europe. Lifeway magazine has recognized him as Man of the Year for 2003. World informational agencies such as ITAR, TAS, Interfax, Reuters, and Associated Press regularly report news from the Embassy of God. Now then, it's got a congregation of thousands, a charismatic Nigerian leader, and it's planning to spend millions on a new headquarters. But the Embassy of God Church isn't in Africa, or indeed in the Bible Belt of the USA, it's in Ukraine. The activities of the Embassy of God and Pastor Sunday have also drawn attention of BBC reporters. Can you imagine a black man coming from Africa, you know, in this society here, you are lucky that you are white, because if you are black, you would have felt the difference. Programs featuring Pastor Sunday are broadcast on ABC TV, CBN, and many other channels. For the fifth year in a row, the satellite Christian network TBN has been broadcasting programs from the Embassy of God. Pastor Sunday has made several appearances on the radio program Focus on the Family and Moody Radio. Through the ministry of Pastor Sunday at Elijah, millions of people around the world have started living according to the principles of Jesus Christ. The last several years of Pastor Sunday's life have been saturated with worldwide travel. Several times a month he holds conferences and seminars abroad. Over the past few years, Pastor Sunday has visited over 30 countries of the world. The ministry of Sunday at Alaja is another proof that the gospel of Jesus Christ through one man can enter millions of homes. And this is only the beginning. Countries and continents are waiting for Pastor Sunday as well as people with destinies. The Apostle Sunday at Alaja is carrying out the perfect will of God on earth, working on issues of national transformation.